Hello, beloved, and welcome to another midweek meditation with me, Pastor Will. It's good to be with you wherever you're joining me from. Thank you for taking this time out of your day to pause for a bit of reflection. I'd like to open us with a word of prayer and a word from the scripture. The Lord be with you. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. And we pray that you would open our eyes to look with wonder at your world and all the people who live in it. Help us to see the world as you do, a thing of beauty created very good and dearly loved by your heart. And help us to interact with the world accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, beloved, today I'd like to take a look and a passage from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is from the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. You know, friends, this is all at once one of my favorite stories from the gospel and one that challenges me deeply. I'm challenged by it because it's not the Jesus that most of us have come to know and love. Jesus here doesn't do what I would expect Jesus to do. A woman comes to him crying for help. Her daughter is tormented by a demon and Jesus ignores her. And she keeps crying out. And the disciples, surely they'll speak up on her behalf, but no, they ask Jesus to send her away because she's getting on their nerves. And Jesus says, it's not my problem. And the woman keeps begging him, and surely her pleas will change his mind. But instead, Jesus seems to insult her. It's not right to take the children's food and give it to the dogs. That's not the Jesus that I've come to expect, and I struggle with that. And yet, I think there's something important in that interaction because I think it is one of Jesus' more human moments. You see, we have a tendency to act in a similar way. When we come upon a person or new information that we don't know and don't understand, we tend to approach it with some suspicion. We tend to see people that we don't know and don't agree with and immediately start to think about what their intentions are rather than what their needs are. How many times have you been at a stoplight and looked out the window and seen someone holding a cardboard sign and wondered just how badly they really needed the money they were begging for, and use that as an excuse not to give. We tend to approach new information with suspicion, and we don't believe the things that we don't like and that don't agree with our preconceived notions, and we have all too often mistaken opinion for truth. But Jesus he changes in this story. He grows. And that in itself is a bit challenging. 
See, after he tells the woman that it's not right to give the children's food to the dogs, she says, yes, Lord, and even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the children's table. And Jesus is astounded because the woman responds in faith, even after being put off again and again. She is persistent. And that seems to reflect more of God's heart as I've come to see it through the scriptures. God is persistent. God keeps after us time and again when we want to put God off and say, no, Lord, I'm perfectly happy doing my thing over here. God still comes and annoys us <laughs> into submission sometimes. And Jesus is amazed at the woman's faith. He sees her with new eyes, with a sense of wonder. He sees her the way that she truly is, the way that God sees her. Beautiful, beloved, a daughter of God, in need of help, help that he can give. And so, moved by this woman's faith, Jesus responds, and proclaims that it will be done for her as she has asked. Beloved, how often do we see a person in need and approach them with suspicion, or rather, let our suspicion keep us from approaching them? How often do we turn people away, even people that we may know, because it's not our problem and we don't want to deal with it? How often do we react to information that we don't want to hear with annoyance, with anger, instead of receiving it and learning and growing and changing? We need to have eyes of wonder, to look at the world the way God does, to look at the world as something beautiful, not something threatening, but something worth exploring, something worth wondering about. And when we encounter people that challenge us, when we encounter information that challenges us, we need to be able to look through God's eyes. And just as Jesus did in this story, we need to be able to change our minds, to grow and learn from voices we have not heard before. When we do, we find that maybe God is calling us in new directions to places we never could have imagined, but blessing tends to abound in the least likely places. I'd like to close our time today by singing God of Wonders. of all creation, of water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of in the morning I will celebrate the light when I stumble in the darkness I will call your name by night God of wonders beyond our galaxy you 
beautiful diversity of this world and the people who live in it. May you approach what is new and different and challenging with that same wonder and not suspicion. May you be open to learning and growing. And when you stumble, because we all do, may you call on the God of wonders and see once more the beauty of God's creation all around you. Until next time, amen.